this video, Dr. Yazid addresses the question, how to prevent enforced disappearances in Malaysia? It was recorded live during a webinar on 29th of August 2020 to mark the International Day of Victims of Enforced Disappearances. Enjoy listening. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A very good night to everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Muhammad Ezzin Kifli from International Islamic University, Malaysia. Uh, before I became law lecturer in International Islamic University, Malaysia, I used to work as a, a lawyer. I used to as a lawyer for a few years. And then I proceed for my uh, doctorate for my PhD in the University of Hong Kong for around four years. And after that, I came back to Malaysia. Uh, I am also the author of Anti-Money Laundering and Counter-Financing of Terrorism Law in Malaysia. So, uh, my one of my latest book is uh, this one by Lexis Nexis. I take note that before this, we have a corruption issue and also anti-money laundering problem, but we don't have a proper textbook uh, before this. Uh, so, me and my clique, Professor Nur Hashima, we prepare this book, Anti-Money Laundering, uh, law, anti laundering and counter financing of terrorism law in Malaysia. So this is the uh, the first uh, book on anti money laundering in Malaysia in the last decade. So I hope it will provide a clearer guideline for prosecution and everything related to anti money laundering. I'm also involved in training uh, law enforcement agencies, including police force and also a counter-terrorist unit uh, from Malaysia and also for foreign government as well. So I'm very much involved in training uh, police officer and law enforcement officers. Uh, my latest book is about uh, cryptocurrency and digital assets law in Malaysia. Uh, it's out uh, this month. Uh, I'm also involved in training. Okay, now let us go down to this uh, issue. First, before we proceed, some of you out there I wonder what is enforced disappearance. In language, we call it kehilangan paksa. Kehilangan paksa. Uh, so what is basically this enforced disappearance? Okay, in simple word, enforced disappearance happen when a person is secretly kidnapped, abducted, or imprisoned by a state or political organization by a third party, with the or by a third party with the authorization support or acquisitions of a state or political organization followed by a refusal to acknowledge the person's fate and the whereabouts with the intent of placing the victim outside the protection of the law. In simple words, when we talk about enforced disappearance, we are talking about a situation where the government sends the government agents to kidnap uh, and sometimes murder someone after that outside the boundary of law. This is a problem, this is a global phenomenon. This happen in various countries. So in simple words, in first discipline, we refer to a situation where someone is uh, secretly abducted and usually after that kidnapped, uh, imprisoned and sometimes murdered by, by state using the agent of the state. Just a brief glimpse. In Algeria, around 6,000 to 7, we have around 6,000 6, to 17,000 enforced disappearance. Usually we have it when there's a political turmoil in the country. Uh, when we have this kind of situation, usually we have a large scale enforced discipline. So in Algeria, we have around 6,000 to 17,000 cases of enforced disappearance. The government admit around 1,000. The NGO alleged around 17,000. And then in Argentina, between 1976 to 1983, we have up to around 30,000 cases. Okay up to around 30,000 people suffering uh, in uh, enforced disappearance. So very big number, 30,000. In Iraq, at least 10 of thousands of people disappeared during the regime of Saddam Hussein, many of them during Operation Anfal. During this time, tens of thousands of people disappeared. This is in Iraq. In Syria, we have ongoing crisis in, in, in Syria because of the civil war. We have an estimate of 80, 82,000 enforced disappearance cases, a very big number in Syria. 
And then in Sri Lanka, we have around 60,000 to 100,000 cases of enforced discipline. We know that uh, in Sri Lanka, there used to be a war between the government and the LTTE. Uh, and long story short, we have around an estimate of 60,000 to 100,000 enforced discipline cases in Sri Lanka. Okay, before we proceed to Malaysia, some of you might wonder, some of the audience might wonder, oh, in Malaysia, this doesn't seem like a big issue because we don't have this kind of number. We don't have like 82,000 or 60,000 or 100,000 cases of enforced disappearance. We just have a few cases of enforced disappearance. But my suspected enforced disappearance. But my question is like this. That is really not the right way to think about it. What if it is your son? What if it is your daughter? What if it's, it is your mother or your father? Will you still say the same? Oh, the number is not so big. It's not really a serious problem in Malaysia. That is the wrong way to think about it. Even if we just have a few cases, we must take note, we must take note that all cases are serious when we talk about, about enforced disappearance. It can be your mother. It can be your father. It can be your children. So all of us must be in this fight together, regardless of our race, religion, political background, ideology, we should be Malaysian, we should be human first when it comes to this matter. Okay, uh, I, I want to read something. Victims are put in terrible situation of helplessness and vulnerability with no access to medical help or legal support. The risk that victims of enforced disappearance become also victims of torture sexual violence or other inhuman treatment is very high. In many cases, victims are even killed. Families and friends are left behind in despair without the possibility to support the victims. Not knowing whether someone you love is alive or dead is probably one of the heaviest burdens to bear. To a certain extent, we can say that this imposed disappearance is to a certain extent even more serious than murder. When someone is murdered, for, for example, when a family member is murdered, you can mourn, you can feel sad, you can go to the, to the grave, you can have a closure and move on. But when we talk about enforced disappearance, it's like your kid has been kidnapped. You cannot move on. You will never be able to just move on because you will always wonder about their fate. Are they okay? Are they being tortured? Are they fine? So you will always be in this dilemma. So enforced disappearance, it's a very terrible thing, and we must take note of the seriousness of it. Okay, how can we prevent enforced disappearance in Malaysia? There are many ways. First, we need to educate the society about enforced disappearance because we need to get the public support. Without public support, it will be very hard to push any new agenda. For example, if you want to improve the law and all, in most cases, we need public support. In order to get the public support, we need to educate the society about this issue. If they are not even aware of this issue, they will not do anything. So the first thing we need to educate the society, we need to get the public support. If we have the public support, we will have the political will because we need a strong political will to make changes. Next is signing and ratifying international treaty. For example, like International Convention on the Protection of All Persons Against Enforced Disappearance. Okay, some of you might wonder, why should we sign international treaty? Couldn't we just pass our law? The answer is yes, if we are passing relevant laws to prevent enforced disappearance. But the truth is that in many cases, if, if we did not sign international treaty, there will not be all this necessary national law. I will explain more on this uh, shortly. We need to pass national legislation to prevent enforced disappearance and to protect and to give remedies to the victims and family. And we need to develop a culture of accountability, check and balance. Okay, first let me explain about this international convention. I understand when we talk about international convention or international human rights instrument, uh, many Malaysians are very skeptical. They might think, oh, this is just an attempt by Western power to interfere with Malaysia or our sovereignty. But this is not really true. I can, we need to understand the context. First, let me explain what is international convention for the protection of all persons from enforced disappearance. This international convention provides for right not to be subjected to enforced disappearance 
as well as the right for the relative of the of disappeared person to know the truth. This will provide access to information, which is very important. The convention gives victims' families the right to seek reparations and to demand the truth about the disappearance of the loved one. The convention contains several provisions concerning prevention, investigation, and sanctioning of this crime, as well as the rights of the victims and the relative and the wrongful removal of children born during captivity in certain scenario. The convention set forth the obligation of international cooperation, both in suppression of the practice and in dealing with the humanitarian aspect related to the crime. Now, let me explain in simple language. Basically, what will happen if Malaysia sign and ratify this, this international convention for the prevention of enforced discipline? What will happen actually if Malaysian government sign and ratify the convention? First, Malaysia must ensure that no one shall be subjected to enforced disappearance. Malaysia cannot use any exceptional circumstances whatsoever whether a state of war or threat of war or internal political instability or any other public emergency as a justification for enforced disappearance. Okay, let me explain. In Malaysia right now, we have emergency law and sometimes the power given for emergency law can be very wide, can be very wide. We have SOSMA, we have all this, all this kind of law. It is very important. If we sign this treaty, we need to understand this treaty prohibit enforced disappearance in all situations, even during war. In other words, even during war, we must still observe the rule of law. We cannot just kidnap someone and kill someone without going for trial, without giving a fair opportunity for that person to defend themselves. In other words, Malaysia, we cannot allow enforced disappearance in all situations. We must always observe the, the law. So this is one of the significance of the, of the convention. Malaysia shall take the necessary measure to ensure that enforced discipline constitute an offence under its criminal law. So we must make sure there's a law to prosecute enforced disappearance. And then Malaysia cannot use any order or instruction from authority as justification for enforced disappearance. So basically a police officer, for example, cannot just kill someone or special branch or anyone. And then they just say, oh, I'm just following order. I'm just following order from my superior. They cannot do that. Malaysia cannot use any order or instruction from authority as, uh, as a justification for enforced disappearance. Malaysia shall guarantee the rights of victims of enforced disappearance to an effective remedy. Malaysia shall ensure that any person tried for an offence of enforced disappearance shall benefit from a fair trial before a competent independent and impartial court or tribunal established by law. Even if a police officer, for example, is being accused of committing an offence of enforced disappearance, the government cannot keep it hidden. In other words, there must be a fair trial, even for the police officer charged for enforced disappearance. And in other words, it ensures fairness to all. It ensures fairness to all. The essence of this convention is to ensure justice. Malaysia shall also ensure appropriate steps be taken where necessary to ensure that complainant, witness, relative, and their defense counsel, as well as person participating in investigation, are protected from all ill treatment. We don't want the family of the person to be intimidated or to be threatened. Okay, that, that cannot be allowed as a consequence of the complaint or give or evidence given. Malaysia shall also ensure that where there are reasonable grounds for believing that a person has been subjected to enforced disappearance, the authorities shall undertake an investigation, even if there has been no formal complaint. In Malaysia, in many cases, uh, the police can say, oh, actually, we cannot do anything. We cannot do anything unless we have a written complaint. Uh, anything, we must first wait for police re report. Even if there's a video circulating, there's a lot of evidence and all that, in many cases, the police refuse to do anything unless there's a police report. By signing the convention, Malaysia shall ensure that where there are reasonable grounds for believing that a person has been subjected to enforced disappearance, the authorities shall undertake an investigation. In other words, as long as there's a reasonable ground, the authorities should investigate. 
Malaysia must also ensure that no one, no one shall be held in secret detention. Secret detention or secret prison is can be very dangerous because suddenly people disappear, go to secret prison, and then the next thing we know they they might be killed or something like that. So, so Malaysia must make sure there's no secret prison or secret detention. Okay, the next one. Uh, Malaysia shall also ensure the training of law enforcement personnel, civil or military, medical personnel, public official and other person who may be involved in the custody or treatment of any person deprived of liberty, it, including the education and information regarding the relevant provision of this convention. In other words, if Malaysia sign this convention, Malaysia must train the law enforcement personnel, the police, the special branch and all, so that they will observe the provision of this convention to ensure justice and fairness to everyone. And then Malaysia shall take measures to search, locate and release disappeared person and in the event of death, to locate, respect and return their remains. If in reality the person has already been killed, for example, the government need to locate, release the disappeared person if the person is alive and in the event of death, to respect and return the, the remains to the family. And then Malaysia must ensure that the victims have a right to obtain reparation and a prompt, fair and adequate compensation. So there must be compensation as well. So those are the uh, some of the obligations of Malaysia if Malaysia signed the international city. Now let us look at some of the benefits and challenges of using international human rights treaty to prevent to prevent enforced disappearance. Okay, let me go briefly. The first one, if we sign this international convention, this will strengthen the protection for everyone under the federal constitution. In Malaysia, the highest law is the Perlembagaan, is the federal constitution. The federal constitution guarantees fundamental liberties. So the CED, CED is the short form for the international convention for the protection of all persons against enforced disappearance, the CED is generally consistent with the spirit of federal constitution that respect and ensure human rights and dignity of individuals. Uh, we have Article 149. Article 149 allows for all this emergency law and, and all that. To ensure protection against uh, enforced disappearance, if amendment can also be made, for example, to clarify that even under emergency, enforced disappearance is prohibited. This will also be a very good addition. From time to time, we have made uh, amendment to the federal constitution for improvement. So this is also a possible, uh, a possible good amendment. Okay, uh, this will also close legal gaps and loopholes. By following this international convention, we will close any legal gaps and loopholes, provided that the terms of the convention are implemented by the government. I will explain this concept uh, soon. Uh, okay, this is uh, one of the points. One of the major benefits of following this international convention is that it will lead or push for the creation of new law. This can be seen as a result of following other conventions in the past. Uh, a simple example is like this. Uh, child rights. Malaysia has a number of law that not only aim at preventing violation of child rights, but also to ensure the care and rehabilitation of children, such as under Child Act 2001, which was enacted to fulfill its obligation after acceding to the Convention of the Rights of Child in 1995. Long story short, we have international law, international convention, basically convention on the right of child. After Malaysia, we follow, we, uh, we sign, we ratify, we agree to follow this convention on the right of child. As a result, we pass Child Act 2001, which, which is a a huge improvement. It gives a lot of benefit for the protection of children. Another example can be seen from the Convention on the, on the Elimination of All Discrimination Against Women. So in, what I'm trying to say is before this, Malaysia has been signing other international treaty when it is uh, good for Malaysia. One is the Convention on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women. As a result, we signed the Convention there's amendment to penal code to increase penalty for certain offences, uh, including rape and incest. We also introduced Anti-Trafficking in Person Act as a result of that. 
we also make amendment to domestic violence act definition of domestic violence to include emotional mental physical form of violence and also amendment to improve protection for survivors of abuse and also some amendment to employment act okay what i'm trying to say here is by ratifying by following this international convention it lead to a creation of various national law which can be very useful for the citizen okay long story short by signing the international treaty it push for the creation of various important national law and then as a result we also have creation of a dedicated committee to fight enforce disappearance and then we have a monitoring by the international community by other country as well so the idea is like this when we sign this international committee when we sign this international convention all of the countries will be looking out for each other so if, for example if there's a uh, enforced discipline cases in another country we will be monitoring it to ensure it did not happen also for malaysia other country will be monitoring it as well to monitor the situation to make sure that enforced disappearance will not happen in malaysia so this is good we become part of a global community for something good for something peace it can also expedite extradition in certain cases it will also improve malaysia standing and reputation we can also improve coordination with non governmental and human right organization the most important thing is because it is the right thing to do it is the right thing to do regardless of our race religion and all we should all agree that no one should be kidnapped and killed for example outside the boundary of law we should be a nation that abide law anything should be according to law no one regardless of the accusation should be subjected to enforce disappearance just kidnap and kill if someone really commit any offense we should charge them in court and let justice uh, be done okay, there are certain concerns related to international convention i give a simple example in 2019 it was reported that the police is uh, seek uh, improvised explosive device and 15 bullets which were meant to be used by terrorist group to attack places of worship following the death of muhammad adib if you still remember last year okay uh, so what happened is there was a terrorist attack plan to revenge to avenge muhammad adib and then uh, in October 2019, last year, the police announced that they have fought 25 planned terrorist attacks in Malaysia since 2013, including several large-scale strikes on Christian, Hindu, and Buddhist house of worship. Okay, so what happened here is we must take note that terrorism is a serious problem in Malaysia. So some people have been arguing that if we find all these human rights treaties instrument or this convention on the protection of all persons against enforced disappearance it might interfere with national interest or counter terrorism operation i want to assure you all that this is not true this is without basis let me explain even in malaysia although we have threat of terrorism for example so far our counter terrorism unit our e8 our police force our army have been managing this threat using law without problem the meaning is that we do have law we do have law to counter to all this kind of national threat there's no need there's no justification for enforced disappearance to kidnap and to kill someone outside the boundary of law just to clarify i'm not accusing anyone or the police or the special force or, or the special branch of doing anything illegal because the investigation are still ongoing so i believe uh, there should be proper investigation and all that but at the same time we must all agree that we should put the necessary measures in place for example the legal framework to prevent enforced disappearance from happening in malaysia okay some of the concerns are that international human rights instrument can be a backdoor to new type of colonialism there might be unfair reporting or biased reporting against malaysia refusal to be subjected to international monitoring national security cons concerns uh, some allege that malaysia human rights record is already good it is not legally required it might lead to interference with domestic sovereignty but we must take note if all countries use this kind of argument therefore there will be no international cooperation and this is a big step backward the idea here is we need to understand 
we might be people of different race, different religion, different political background and ideology. But I think we all can agree that no one should be allowed to kidnap our children or our father and our mother and then just kill them outside the boundary of law, regardless of the accusation. Even if there's accusation, even in terrorism cases, there should be due process. The person should be charged in court. There should be evidence. No one should be kidnapped and killed outside the boundary of law. So don't think about this case as something far away. But instead, think about our beloved one, our children, our parents. We don't want anything like that to happen to, to them. I have a kid. Uh, the, this kid of mine, he went missing uh, in KLCC Garden just for a few minutes. Okay, he's four years old. Four, four years old, just for a few minutes. I, I was looking at the younger one. And then when, when I look back at the older and the older son is not there and it's like the scariest day of my life and this just happened for like one minute or two I minute mean, i searched for him and i found it back after like one minute but that was like the scariest one minute of my life can you imagine that happening to you for years waiting for your beloved one long story short there's no justification for enforced disappearance uh that will be all uh i'm looking forward later to receive your question and all i hope uh the session has been beneficial to everyone Thank you a lot for your participation.